to protect the identity of my clients. Uh, Sarah, uh, when, when she met me, was 29 years of age, and she was already doing prostitution. So she was a prostitute who wanted to quit, who wanted to uh, abolish that practice, and she came for help. She met me and some female coaches, and we were hoping uh, to work with her to help her out of her misery. And uh, the story started uh, when, when she called up at reflecting over you know ending up her life and killing herself and and so on a story that i heard so many times in the past 17 18 years now uh, from people who are addicted to pornography whether males or females so this girl wasn't different much and uh, alhamdulillah we arranged to meet and we talked to her and it turns out that at the age of five she had a bad dream and uh, she ran to her mother's home, uh, mother's room, uh, to her surprise, she opened the door and she found her father and her mother in a sexual position. And on across the bed, there was a, a what, what she came to know later, a pornographic film being played while her parents are committing this uh, act. Of course, parents having intimacy is absolutely halal. There is no any issue uh, with that. However, leaving the door unlocked or thinking that because your daughter is five years, she wouldn't understand is a great mistake. On the top of that, uh, watching pornography while you are uh, having sexual intimacy is even a bigger haram. So what happened is the daughter saw the parents doing that and saw the film uh, being played. She didn't make sense of it, but she was scared to death. So instead of hiding in her mother's arm uh, because of that terrifying dream, she had to uh, get back to her room, bury herself under the blanket, and uh, be hunted for years with these images that always uh, uh, raise her curiosity about her body parts, about her uh, sexual life in the future. Uh, the second in this incident for the same lady was uh, two years later, so at the age of seven or eight, when uh, the parents used to go for vacation with the other family members, and in, a, in an afternoon, she, they were all napping. Uh, aunties and moms were cooking. And uh, the little girl woke up and she went upstairs where she can use the toilet or the bathroom. And when she opened the door, she found her uncles. One of her uncles was sitting on the toilet seat and uh, apparently he was masturbating. He was pleasuring himself and he was holding a magazine in his hand. Now, the uncle, instead of, uh, you know, locking the door and doing a bit his business, uh, all what he had to do now is to shout and scream at the girl to leave. Uh, and again, he thought that she's young. She wouldn't understand. So he didn't even bother to talk to her. He didn't even apologize for his behavior. Uh, and on the top of that, he forgot the magazine uh, in the bathroom. And later on, uh, little Sarah entered into the room. Uh, the bathroom and she found the magazine and all what she did at that time all according to her narrative and by the way her story is narrated in my book aware find out who you are the porn uh, if you didn't read it yet you can head to awareacademy.com.au slash shop and you can see the book there uh, so I, I related the story in, in great detail so little Sarah all what she had in mind is to capture these images, as many images as possible through the magazine. So she start flipping the pages, flipping the pages. It was a porn magazine. Back in the days, they didn't have internet. Uh, these pornographic magazines and VHS tapes were the source of people's misery, of people's pleasure. So uh, she kept on flipping the pages to store as much images as possible. And she left the room hunted by these images. According to her, the first incident when she saw her parents having sex and she saw the glimpse of pornographic film being played on TV was scary. She started shivering. She was, uh, her heartbeats were, were, were too fast. She was really uh, afraid. But the second experience is different. The second experience she narrated that started feeling rush of excitement and pleasure uh, throughout her body to an extent that she started imitating those images on the long run. Whether uh, while there, there was no male involved in her life growing up, but she saw certain images where females 
were doing things to themselves or to their own bodies. And her curiosity took her into that uh, lifestyle for years to come. Pain of uh, addiction to pornogra pornography and masturbation and uh, secretive life that she hated to the core. And this is the point with addiction. So those who are listening to me, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the problem with addiction uh, is that it gives you that pleasurable rush for a few seconds. But the deep depression, anxiety, pain, guilt, shame, all those negative emotions that we go through, or I don't like to call emotions negative, but all those uh, uh, feelings that drain us to negative lifestyle are much longer. They are experienced in a, in a much longer time when you are addicted to anything. If you're addicted to drugs, when you sniff your drug, you feel pleasure. There is no, there is no lie about it. You, you get some rush in your brain of that adrenaline and, and dopamine and whatnot that makes you excited, makes you happy for a very short while. But after that, days and weeks sometimes in guilt, shame, and pain that you can't even express to anyone. And uh, there is no difference when it is pornography, especially when you are religious, when you are a Muslim, when you are a Christian, when you are a person of faith who believe that looking at these images would ultimately drag you to do things that you don't believe in. And this is exactly what happens in the life of Sarah. So Sarah, she started, addict she started being addicted to pornography. And of course, with the early 90s, Internet uh, popped up. And as a result, uh, pornography uh, pornography made its way to internet websites static pictures then by 2006 boom youtube came to life and with it came all these streaming live or uh, recorded videos that you can uh, uh, see at will so these videos back in the days you used to download you, you couldn't watch videos unless you download it. And because the internet was super slow, it was very difficult for people to download. So the only way for them was static pictures. And again, this is an, another interesting fact about addiction. Addiction escalates, does not remain in one level. So it takes you from one stage to another, from one stage to another with no end. Just like drug addiction, when, you, when you're addicted to cocaine or heroin, you take some doses and then you escalate, escalate, escalate until one day you want it to escalate even further until you die. Uh, where pornography does not cause death, but it kills other aspects of life. Uh, it kills our innocence as children, just like how and what happened to Sarah in her childhood. It kills her innocence and it made her growing up very curious about human bodies, about females' bodies in particular. It makes her stretch her hands uh, when, when, they, uh, when her cousins came home and tried to molest other girls. It made her move with any boy, say, I love you, or with any boy who wink at her at school, or with any boy who tell her, let's go out. It makes her immediately receptive to these things. And before you know it, at the age of 17 or 18, uh, Sarah lost her virginity. And as a result, and we're talking about a Muslim sister here. We're not talking about someone strange or someone like, you know, sexual intimacy is something I need, uh, easy for them to, to handle. We're talking about Muslims. Uh, I hope if you can, someone just confirm that you can hear me, guys. Yes, you can share. Alhamdulillah. So we're talking about Muslims who, who've been into this uh, for years, subhanAllah, and she lost her virginity. And with it, she started being addicted to sexual intimacy itself. So now it's not now pornography. It's not masturbation alone. Now there is something extra and that is sex itself. And there uh, where Sarah found her uh, career, well, I had to may Allah protect us all as a professional prostitute for many, many years until she meet us at the age of 29. Unmarried, no future, breakup, with family members, everyone don't want to associate himself or herself with her. She wanted to end her life. That's what pornography promises. And that's what pornography does. And you may think that this story is extreme. You may think that this is rare, but you actually wouldn't believe if I told you that many people who are in the field of prostitution, I'm calling it field because it's recognized in many, many countries, but 
in those people who take that path of prostitution, most likely their childhood, their teenager, uh, as teenager, as uh, young young children, young young youth, uh, probably they have ex been exposed to pornography, molestation, uh, and as a result, they ended up where they are. Most likely, if you don't believe me, you can read. Uh, you know, um, uh, we have we have websites like. Uh, uh, sex trafficking or uh, sex exploitation and how how the entire industry of pornography they they uh, they trap those young girls they give them money so that you know live a glamorous life and uh, bam before you know it you are signing a contract for life to be under the mercy of this industry and before you know it you're addicted to drugs you're addicted to alcohol you take painkillers because you can't take the pain the slaps the choking the beating the all this, all these, what I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, associating with pornography. And then you come watching these miserable girls and miserable men as well. And, uh, you know, seeking pleasure on their misery by watching them and, you know, uh, pleasuring yourself behind screens. So we, we want to, why am I telling you these stories? They happen. They happen in, in, in real life. And, if it didn't happen to you, it may happen to your children if you don't protect them, if you don't know how to navigate around these uh, intense images that could hook your children on uh, for the rest of their lives and uh, the cycle will be repeated, subhanAllah. We're talking now about internet, fast internet, and, uh, uh, you know, if, if you're aware of uh, MBN here in Australia, the fastest internet, and, and so on, in, in, in maybe a couple of years, and it's already happening, three-dimensional, uh, and we're talking about multiverse now, and so on and so forth, that things will turn upside down. And if you don't be on the top of your game to protect your kids, they will be hooked on in a minute, in a minute. So Alhamdulillah, Sarah is in a treatment now. Uh, the treatment may take her a couple of years before she gets clean of all the rubbish that she had been exposed to in the past, but pornography was one of the main contributors. Uh, I was just, last week, last Sunday, I was invited to attend a conference in Indonesia. And subhanAllah, it's in Bahasa, Indonesia, but I was uh, given, alhamdulillah, the opportunity to listen to the translation uh, from uh, a brother. And uh, the, the, uh, the presenter is a medical doctor neuroscientist. And he was explaining his latest research on children who've been exposed to pornography and how he scanned their brain, MRI scanning, and how he found that the prefrontal cortex, which was mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al-Alaq, the first chapter of the Quran, Nasiyatun Kadibatun Khati'ah, this nasiya, this, this prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for our motivation, for our concentration, for our memory, for our decision-making, for our absorbing knowledge and so on, how it is impacted by pornography and how it shrink physically by its, uh, you know, from its original size by four plus percent, leading to all these destructive, you know, social skills, uh, study and so on, uh, and, and its impact on children growing up. And I was amazed, like, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, we're working now on a complete translation of that research so that I can come, inshallah, and address it to the English speaking people. But the point is, if you do not protect your children from pornography, and if you don't talk to them, and this is what, what, what most people don't like to hear, you must talk to them at a very, very young age. Listen, there are bad images out there. I trust you, but I don't trust the internet. And as a result, we're going to filter our mobile phones. We're going to filter every device. You will not take your devices in the bedroom. There will be a special place here in this house for internet devices. Everyone must face, you know, adults while they are wa watching games or playing or whatever you're doing on the internet. The devices I have to see from far. As a father, that's your responsibility. If you yourself is addicted, you have to make a plan that you will never take your device into your bedrooms. That you will have to find the most sophisticated filter, the most sophisticated blocker to prevent you from even reaching these websites. If you're sincere, I receive a lot of emails from people who wanted to get, you know, cure. And when I 
when I tell them, listen, I have programs, but they are paid and they are paid for a reason because we want you to be committed. And even if you don't have money, you have money to carry a phone that's worth thousands of dollars. But when it comes to recovery from a meth, from a, an addiction that's leading you to destruction, some people, they feel like, you know, nah, I'm not going to pay, you know. So the problem is that people, we have millions of people, if not billions already, because uh, one of the websites say 42 billion visits uh, had occurred on their website in one year, in 2019. 42 billion visits. Imagine the number. So we have millions, if not billions of people addicted to pornography. So you have to do something about it. So if you yourself is addicted, you have to leave that device outside the bedroom. You have to be serious. Otherwise, no one, no one will care to help you. You see? If you don't care to help yourself, if you don't want to invest in your own recovery, then why would a coach, why would a scholar, why would a sheikh, why would anyone want it to help you? Because there are other people who are serious. So the, if you yourself is addicted, do something about it. If you wanted to protect children, do something about it by means of conversation, education, and also protection at home. So as you can see... Uh, Every section that I will address today, every story that I have, I will address it and I will get, I will give you some solutions with it. Of course, the time does not allow us to go for depth of solutions, but we'll give you some tips and tricks, inshallah. Second story I have is about a young couple who got married in my presence. And uh, after two days, they came back and the problem was... Sheikh, I found a pornography video in his pocket. And I said, okay, let's let's talk about it. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless him that he came and he accepted. Some people, they don't, they don't want even to speak about it. They don't want to talk to any counselor. They are afraid and so on. No problem. Alhamdulillah, he's brave to come. So this is not the problem, Sheikh. This is not the main problem. Okay, what's the main problem then? said the main problem is that he want me. Listen to this carefully, my brothers and sisters. Listen to this very, very carefully because it's happening on a massive scale. You want me to take a role play of a prostitute. You want me to call him names that are very dirty. You want, he start calling me names that are dirty. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that whatever you consume, my brothers and sisters in Islam, whether consuming by your eyes or consuming even in your body, it will impact your behavior. It will make you behave like such. And I get that a lot. Many, many clients will call me, especially young girls who just got married, say, brother, I'm a little bit, you know, my body is a bit big, and my husband want me to do certain positions during intimacy that I can't even breathe sometimes. And he will force me to do this and force me to do that. All of that is the impact of pornography. And many a times I will tell those wives, go and ask your husband if they're watching pornography. Pornography impact the behavior in so many ways. You're watching actors and actresses thinking that they're enjoying the process. They're paid to do that. They're getting paid to do that, to imitate the pleasure. To act that they are happy, but in real life, read their stories. There's a, a lady who passed away just recently. Her name is Shelley Lobin, who was a sex, you know, porn star who wrote a book called The Fantasy. Uh, the the uh, uh, let me see the book. Sorry, uh, behind behind the fantasy of porn or something like that. Behind the fantasy of, of porn by Shelley Lobin, who was an ex porn star at the time. She passed away recently, and she exposed. This industry saying that we never have that excitement going into bed with those men. It was just a job. It was a painful job that we used to take painkillers and drugs to numb our pain during the process. But once the camera is rolling, we have to act that we are happy. Read the work of Mary Crabb here in, in Australia, one of the elite researchers in the field. She went to St. Uh, uh, Fernand's, I think, in, in America, in the valley where... Uh, porn, porn films are being, uh, uh, you know, conducted and, and rolled. And she interviewed sex stars there, porn stars, and she talked to some of them. And uh, sometimes the director, that's the actor saying, sometimes the director will say, stop. Don't try to, uh, uh, you know, try to swallow the pain. Don't try to appear on the screen that you're sad or in pain. No, no, no. You have to act that you are enjoying it. 
And when the consumer now start watching these things, thinking that they're happy, you want it to go with good intentions. Sometimes you want to make your wife happy, thinking that this is the way to make it happen. So that these couples, uh, the, the wife in particular said, Sheikh, he's not only calling me names, he beat me up. He beat me up. He slapped me. He choked me. All these things happen as a result of the impact of this imagery on marriage, uh, on, on people's, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the consumer. And, and uh, I myself, I was called one day to uh, the hospital where a young girl was actually uh, coming to the hospital with a broken neck as a result of this. Her neck was broken. She was almost going to die because her husband thought that pulling out the hair or the head or this and that is actually part of the sexual pleasure, which is not. It's stupid. It's plain stupid. And if anyone is experiencing this, tell your husband to stop doing it. And it's an indication that your husband probably is watching pornography. And you need to go and talk to him honestly. Is If there is any pornography in your life, just let me know. I'll help you. And this is another side note message for wives. Please remember that your husband, when he's on porn, he's not, uh, he's not really cheating on you. He's not really thinking that you are not beautiful anymore or not good for him anymore. It's just addiction. He's just being hooked on, on these images. And he can't help but to go and visit it again and again. But he's still in love with you. In fact, if, if he could go back in time, he would choose millions of times not to ever access pornography. He's in pain. He needs your help. So when you find out or when he confines to you, help him. Don't go, don't go to that way out quickly and say, no, you know what, divorce me. I don't want you anymore. Of course, you have the option. You have the option to walk away if he persisted, if he, if he proved that he's dishonest, if he proved that he is not transparent in seeking the cure, then you have an option to walk away. But do all you can to save the marriage. Do all you can to save children from growing up without a husband around the house, without a wife around the house to, you know, to help them and teach them these things. Otherwise, the cycle will be repeated. Wallah. The cycle will be repeated. Final story before we open the floor to uh, question and answer, inshallah ta'ala. And what is the remedy for husband and wife? As I mentioned, counseling. Wallahi, they need to learn how to live as husband and wife. They need to learn how to live as Muslim husband and wife. What are the things to watch? Hollywood, Bollywood, movies, and all these things are coming to our house like chewing gum. Like this is the replacement of sitting together and reading Quran. This is the replacement of sitting together and maybe engaging in nice discussion about what happened throughout the day. The replacement is Netflix. The replacement is YouTube. The replacement is anything but family time. Even on our dining table, when we come and eat together, we are not together anymore. We are on our devices. So that is, that really the solution for couples who are going through this is nothing but counseling because uh, the, 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 the wife, when she goes through that trauma, her psyche became sick. She started getting sick, drained emotionally, mentally, and uh, it's a form of abuse that needs to be resolved professionally. And the husband, on the other hand, is, is addicted. He needs someone to help him to get out of that ma maze and live a life of purity. Final story of a person that I met personally uh, after he, uh, he came to my office, uh, broke, crying, and, uh, and subhanAllah al-Azim. Again, it was, uh, he was very young and... Uh, and a few, uh, it was a few days after his uh, wedding as well. And he failed to perform sexually with his wife. And he didn't know why. He was like bodybuilder, very healthy. Uh, he couldn't perform with his wife. And the reason was because our brain conditioned him to masturbate and to enjoy sexual pleasure only through uh, uh, screens and monitors. And this is exactly what expert neuroscientists uh, have mentioned, that our brain recognizes your activities and if it's pleasurable, it creates those pathways for that particular activity. And every time you are away from that activity, every time you are not performing this activity, dopamine doses will be produced to remind you to repeat the activity. So you're out of control. So when you try to attain that pleasure through other activities, other means, our brain does not, does not recognize it. And many a times the brain will, uh, uh, will not cooperate and as a result many many men have reported that they are unable 
to function sexually with their own beloved wives. But when they are on porn, they have no problem of erection. They have no problem of masturbation. But when they are with their wives, they fail to perform sexually. And this is now a condition known as porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? We thought back in the days, we thought that pornography is something like, you know, fun. We do it quickly. And this, khalas, we say, astaghfirullah, we take a bath and that's it. But no, it destroys every aspect of your life. Literally, it destroys every aspect of your life. And this is not a, an exaggerating statement. I'm responsible of what I just said. It destroys every aspect of your life. And if you're not brave enough to take a break and say, you know what? This is the time I will put everything off and care and work on my recovery. Then you will live in this misery for as many years as you have lived in the past. Wallahi, I know many people who have been addicted for 40 years, more than 40 years. Addicted, literally addicted, meaning every two, three days they are into their practice. They seek forgiveness and then they fall back. In Ramadan, outside Ramadan, they go to Hajj, they come back, they do the same. Why? Because they've been alone. They've been alone in this misery. So what's the solution? The solution is to get back and, uh, and, and make a commitment that this is it. Uh, I will just break from everything that I'm doing. I'll just focus on recovery for a year until I get clean. Then I move on with my life. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you quit your job. I'm not suggesting that you leave your home. I'm suggesting that you give recovery a priority before anything else. And, um, and as a result, inshallah ta'ala, you start enjoying mental clarity, focus, productivity, uh, love relationship with your wife. Um, success in your exams if you are students, you know, uh, spirituality would be on its peak. You will start feeling the prayers instead of saying Allahu Akbar and seeing images, the flashbacks in your mind. So you start enjoying the is Islam as a religion. You start experiencing all these goodness in your life. But the first year is 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 challenging. It's not easy. The road to recovery is not easy. I always tell that to my friends, to my brothers and sisters and people. And in my books, I mentioned that many times. It's not going to be easy. Don't ever think that getting unstuck is easy. It's going to take time. But is it worth it? Wallahi, it is. Praying Fajr, waking up and leaving your bed in the early hours of the morning is not easy. It's difficult. Especially if you are, uh, you know, you, you sleep past midnight. It's very difficult to get up and do your fajr but is fajr necessary it's an obligatory you must wake up no matter what happened I, I will wake up and you see training training ask any trainer ask any athlete they play for example i like i like football soccer and 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 if you if you follow just the schedule of any any league you'll see that they play uh, every three four days uh, a match but every day they train even in their break, when, when the season is off, they have three, four, five months uh, just continuous training. Why? To maintain fit. So that when the season starts, they are ready to play because that's their enjoyment. That's the reward is to play. They don't like training, but it's necessary. Isn't it? Right? Isn't it? It's necessary. That's why they push the limits and train like crazy. Why? Because they want those 90 minutes on the pitch. They don't want to be on the bench. Who goes on the pitch? Those who are most fit. Those who are most ready. Those who have been training seriously. So similarly, my brothers and sisters, if you want to get fit uh, and, and get rid of this addiction, you need to work very hard and you need to take it seriously. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani grant us uh, a heart that's uh, pure and a mind that's clean and uh, a religion for Allah's sake, to practice Islam for Allah's sake, uh, without adding to it any uh, trash, any 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 rubbish that would uh, uh, dilute, dilute our our faith uh, uh, in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and and compromise Jannah on the Day of Judgment. So uh, I hope that you have got some benefits out of this little reminder. Uh, I will leave the rest to you guys. If you have any questions, inshallah ta'ala, we can entertain that in the remaining time. But meanwhile, I'll stop talking here, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair.
جزاك اللہ خیر شیخ بیکوز ریلی انفارمیٹو اینڈ انسپائرنگ وی آلریڈی ہیو فیو کوشچنز بٹ اٹس لائک وی کین ٹیک اراؤنڈ 3 اور 4 ڈیو ٹو ٹائم کنسٹرین سو لیٹ می گو تھرو دا فرسٹ کوشچن دے ایکچولی ٹیکسٹڈ لائک آن आवर فیسبک پیج سو ون پرسن از سیئنگ آئی ایم ایڈکٹڈ ٹو لوکنگ ایٹ پورنوگرافک پکچرز ایون دو اٹس آئی نو اٹس حرام آئی کین ناٹ اسٹاپ مائی سیلف آئی ہیو ٹرائڈ ٹو do much uh, time and again but i again fall into this trap like i go back and it's harder to me give up the, uh, at that time it forced me to watch more what should i do as i mentioned what should you do is to seek uh, a recovery you, you number one you have to tell someone that you trust you have to reach out to someone professional you have to uh, uh, clean your environment you have to uh, filter your mobile phones you have to block your 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 uh, you know your your internet all, all these collective solutions are necessary you have to tell someone is even more important to tell someone who will monitor your behavior is very important so i'm not sure who is the questioner whether he's a, a teenager or a married person no matter who you are you have to tell someone if you're a teenager young boy who is not unmarried you need to reach out to your parents and tell them listen i have this problem and i uh, you know i need you to, to help me and i got that a lot i i teach in schools and uh, i always advise my teenager students to if you have this problem go and tell your parents yes parents sometimes react differently especially our cultures maybe are unaware of this issue but at least you get the ball rolling at least now you know who can help you and who cannot so those who react negatively leave them aside and go to someone else go to your best friend neighbor anyone that you trust a sheikh in the masjid who's willing to be your accountability partner because without without someone in this problem you're not going to get better so be ready to do that and this is very important because many people they will come to me and sheikh i want you to be my accountability partner i just want to make it clear i cannot be your accountability partner i can be your guide your teacher but i don't know who you are i don't know where do you live i don't know what's your schedule an accountability partner need to know your your in and out schedule what time you wake up what time you sleep what time where you go what time you come back from you know all these little details are so essential for someone to know so that they can monitor you and that's just the beginning of recovery if you're willing to do that then 50% of the cure is done but if you're not willing in the first place there are people not willing to even put full uh, filters on their phones they don't want why because they still have that hope that one day uh, I will relapse, I go back and I watch and I pleasure myself. So if you're not willing, then there is no one can help you. No one. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna Allah la yugayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yugayiru ma bi anfusin. Allah will never change the condition of anyone unless they change what's within themselves. You make the move. You initiate the change. Allah will change you. But if you don't want, if you don't want, if you're not willing, if you're not willing to listen to experts, there is no hope i hope that this will give you that inshallah push to start reaching out for people to start cleaning up your environment look at the environment what are there in your environment that always encourage you to do the haram what websites do you visit that always trigger you and go back block that delete that deactivate social media unfriend people online whatever it takes whatever it takes i call it environmental invasion invade your environment to clean it to make it conducive to iman conducive to learning con- conducive to acts that are pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i hope this answers the question sir uh, sure jazakallah khair you can see the second question on our screen how to get back uh, from pornographic activities like what should be the parents role like how should they initiate a student or a child is going at a standard school maybe at that point how you look at this question so uh um, I don't know if I understand the, the question correctly, but if, if, if this question is asked by parents as to yes, what to yes. do as pa- so what to do as parents to help children who are maybe into porn, you have to constantly talk to them. Listen, these images will lead to uh, destruction in the future, your husband, your wife, you know, physical problem, health problem, mental issues and all this. So education at home, this is important. On the top of that, There are many softwares now. All it takes is just five seconds search on Google about those uh, parental guidance, parental control, parental 
devices that can monitor and mirror your mobile phones with your child phones and so on, so you can see what your children are doing. I have here in Australia a system called Family Zone. I'm not sure if it's available uh, where you are, guys, but Family Zone works magic for me. It blocks everything. You don't need to do anything. So you give the software, you give that Wi-Fi to your children, and it will do the magic on its own. But what is more, more powerful for parents to do is to always constantly ask their children, is there anything that I need to know? Anything that you've done that you know is wrong? I need attention. Don't worry, I'll not scold you. I'll not punish you. I just want to help you in case there's anything wrong. You see, the conversation, my brothers and sisters, between parents and children need to change. The age of scolding, smacking and beating, the age that me and you grew up experiencing from our parents, this age is over. Even though our parents perhaps were able to get results by doing that with us, but that's not going to be the case with the new generation. The new generation need different approach. They need logical explanation. They need uh, convince me kind of, you know, conversation. But if you take it the hard on them, they will do it outside. They will do it on their cell phones outside. They will go with their friends and, and do the same thing. So we have to be very, very vigilant on all aspects. Education at home, but also protection. Grab, grab those uh, software, see whichever software available out there and protect the devices. Make policies. No one takes the phone into bedroom. It's forbidden. It's forbidden. It's whether you have internet or not, doesn't matter. No internet after certain hours. Some kids, they get out of their bed past midnight while parents are asleep and they go, they steal their phones from the reception area and they get to the bedroom and they do the, the same thing. So disconnect everything after certain hours in the night, after 9 a.m. Uh, p.m. or something like that. No more internet. And you be a role model as parents as well. No phones in the bedroom, no phones even for parents in the bedroom. Okay, Sheikh, here's another question. Someone is asking, like, what's the role of porn uh, film, films on pornography, like Hollywood movies, you can see? If they are influencing us on, on this. No, as they said, my dear brother, as they said, they said what? They said sex sells. So if, if you have a, an action movie in Hollywood and Bollywood and whatnot, even Indian movie back in the days, they didn't have that uh, uh, physical contact between females and males back in the days. I used to watch Indian movies when I was young. Uh, it was safer than any American movie. Like we used to uh, watch them because they are the least you could see anything, yani haram, except the dancing and the, the, the nudity sometimes, you know, the, the, the woman wearing inappropriate. Uh, but, but the sexual scenes were rarely to be found in Indian movies back in the days. They will come very close, very close, but they will not do anything. Unlike now, now everything, Hollywood, Bollywood, they must insert some sexual scene to attract the attention of the buyer. Even though the movie is like, you know, Fast and Furious, cars are flying and fighting and killing and guns. and But you'll see all of a sudden a scene between a man and a woman doing something haram. And that's the role of, of, of any film. They want to insert those pornographic images so that they can attract the consumer who they know. They like this thing. They know they are addicted to pornography, and that will be a trigger for the hardcore later on. So uh, it's it's just business, man. It's it's just something they use. They know it sells. They know it attracts attention, and they are not ashamed now to even include that in cartoon movies and Disneyland movies and all that. They are not ashamed. It was the trend back in the days, even in in Mickey and Minnie Mouse and. All these movies and Tom and Jerry, they will, but they will put indirect messages. They used to put back in the days indirect images that could be stored in, in, in our subconscious mind that will remind us of sexual tension or sexual practices in the future. That was back in the days, and it, it's a known fact. But now it's blunt. There is no shame anymore. There is no need to put in direct messages, just put the whole thing. So you'll see cartoon images kissing each other also, loving each other, and boyfriend and girlfriend concept. And now even with the, uh, of course, LGBTQ uh, uprising, of course, there are also these invitations and, and education in that sense to attract our attention to every trend that these industries and the governments wanted to enforce.
Any other questions? Can you hear me, brother? Um, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. Uh, the brother, I lost the brother, I'm, uh, the host. <laughs> uh, but I can see a question here or um, avoiding social yes, media. Yes, is yes. Uh, okay. can you hear me? Yeah, avoiding social media is a solution, especially Instagram. It's not about avoiding social media. It's about, it's about are you addicted? And is Instagram a trigger for you? If it is, then absolutely avoid it by all means. But if you're using social media like myself, I'm using social media, I'm using Instagram, I'm using all this, uh, and I'm using it to serve the dean or I'm using it to educate, then there's no problem, no harm. It, the question, what are you doing on social media? What is your goal of going there? Uh, who are your friends there? Who are the people that you follow there? And all that contribute to your behavior outside social media or on social media themselves, people will take the conversation in private and do haram on social media. So it's not about social media, really. It's about you doing what. So if the answer is I'm doing haram wrong and I'm in deep trouble, uh, then leave it. Deactivate it. It's, you know, nothing will change in your life. In fact, you'll change to the better. But if it's contributing to your sobriety, if you're using this platform to educate, to inspire, to help people, we have so many good personalities that we learn from our own social media. Uh, and we are learning from them. So if you're addicted and Instagram or Snapchat or whatnot are uh, the main contributor uh, for your addiction, then leave them definitely by all means. Cut them off your life until you're good to go on your, cell or on your own. But if they're not, then there's no, I don't see it's, a, it's an issue. Okay. That was our last question for today's session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.